for right now, just the background, you all um, have been on these before. If you're new to these, this webinar series, this is our sixth in the series of webinar presentations. And I can tell you that we have plans to keep this going through the summer every other week. I am the, this is Bill Murphy again, for those that just jumped on, we see more names on here. I am the engineer for ASP Enterprises, Quick Supply and Bowman Construction Supply. And I see my buddy uh, logged in as Bill Mur William Murphy. That's hilarious. So we're going to have two William Murphys on here. But Quick Supply, ASP, and Bowman have been in business for 50 years. It says 30 years, but over 50 years now. And I can tell you that we, we, we're growing in not only – I'm going to make him the host here. So let's see if you can unmute yourself there. Mike, are you on? Yeah, I'm on. That's awesome. Say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry for the uh, short delay here, but uh, we're uh, we're on and and live. Well, I'm cracking up. So if you will advance the slide, I, I'm just going to let everybody know what states we're in. But the folks that are on here, most of them are probably going to be from these eight states, unless some of your friends jumped on from Canada. And I don't want to give away the surprise of where you're from. So <laughs> I, I already gave them a teaser. We'll get more into that in a little bit. That's right. But, I want to I want to know if you can go ahead and advance the slide one more time there if I gave you control. Sure, yeah. Uh I uh let me see. I think I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll stop sharing and we'll okay. go right into your presentation. How about that? Okay, yeah, just give me a sec there, Bill, and I'll uh, I'll log us back in. And so guys, uh for those of you that are um on this and you have some friends that couldn't make it or some coworkers that if 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 once we get rolling you think it's interesting enough to share with them we're going to archive a recording of this and you're going to be able to share that with them and we'll give you links to that when we get done looks like you might be taking over control there mike yeah one sec i'm just loading her up you're going to pull up your presentation so asp quick supply and bowman you know of a, know of us from our geotextile business we provide construction site materials in the civil and construction industries. And we have a lot of commodity products for the uh, construction sites, the BMPs, erosion control, sediment control, and we're experts in all of the above, uh, whether it be road stabilization, um, stream bank protection, slope stabilization. But we've also grown in the last five plus years in the stormwater industry, and that's stormwater management, stormwater quality. And we've really taken off with a lot of the engineered products, a lot of innovation. And we try to bring in only the best partners from around the world for all these solutions, including our vegetated solutions. And what we found a lot of benefit to, since we couldn't do cleaning green this year with COVID, was that we would do instead these virtual presentations. And if you go ahead and click on down to a couple more slides there, once you get started, Mike, that'd be great. But some of you went to cleaning green in the past, and we're sorry we couldn't meet in person. We will meet in person as soon as we're allowed. And we have a lot of power that we've um, grown our yards and our, and you leave it right here on this one for a minute, Mike. Thanks. Okay, yeah, no sweat. Um, we've grown all of our properties, all of our ASP, Quick Supply and Bowman properties, and we're constantly seeking to improve. So we're going to grow the sizes of our warehouses, the sizes of our yards. We're adding drivers and warehouse employees and trucks. We're really growing our fleet. Um, and that we're continuing to position ourselves to be the best uh, in our business and to always have everything that you need readily available. So, with that being said, our next in our series of innovative solutions will be Flex MSE, our vegetative wall system. And you heard his voice, and I want to introduce Mike Calwert. Mike's the CEO and president of Trexiana. They're the manufacturer of Flex MSE. He's a geomodular construction specialist. Mike helps engineers, designers, construction experts tackle traditional wall systems with a more sustainable and cost-effective approach. We're very excited about this. Uh, before founding Trexiana, Mike worked in the fields of business consultation, technical engineering, and IT, helping corporations and startups achieve success. He now trains and coordinates a brilliant global team, and I can attest to that. I've met several of them. A brilliant global team of focused geomodular gurus, including vegetation, engineering, and construction professionals on the FlexMSE system. FlexMSE is a unique soft building material that outperforms many hard armor products. FlexMSE offers natural beauty and lifetime performance in water, roadways, and site development walls, and only gets stronger and greener as time goes on. I'm excited about this. He's got a lot of great pictures, and with that, I'll hand the keys over to you. Thanks, Mike. Hey, thanks, Bill, and uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, taking the time to uh, to log in today. Uh, I know there's a, a ton of these kind of uh, webinars out there. Everybody's uh, getting used to this uh, 
a new way of learning. And uh, we're excited to uh, share uh, a little bit of information around uh, Flex MSE with you. And uh, yeah, I will uh, dive right in here. And I know that there's, uh, we're gonna hopefully have some time at the end for Q and A, but we're always available for, um, for a chat through email or uh, call us up anytime. So, um, so we'll, get, we'll get going here. Flex MSC is a vegetated wall system. Uh, you see the second category here, geomodular block and interlocking plate system. Uh, this is a category that we've worked out with folks uh, from the Army Corps of Engineers, various uh, DOTs, government uh, areas, where uh, perhaps on a plan you can't single source a product. So having a category is, is really important. And uh, this is the category that where uh, Flex MSC fits. Uh, the system is comprised of two main components. So our geotextile bag uh, and our interlocking uh, plate here. Now you might look at this and go, you know, what's a big deal? It's a sandbag and a clip. Um, it's actually closer to concrete than it is to a sandbag. So I wanna talk about some of the similarities and then uh, get into how Flex MSE is unique to all other systems in the market. So like concrete, you stack in an offsetting pattern. So you create that running bond up your wall in the same way you would with, uh, with other systems. Uh, the interlocking plate uh, will bridge the joint between uh, two bags so that when your subsequent row comes in it centers over that plate and creates a mechanical connection so you'll have hundreds or thousands of these mechanical connections throughout a wall uh, linking it all together uh, much in the same way mortar or pinning might uh, but there's no single point of failure uh, if you want to make a flex msc wall green you vegetate it and there's a number of ways to vegetate the system so grasses flowers trees uh, we get into that as we go uh, if you want to make a concrete wall green, uh, you paint it, and then you come back in two weeks and you paint her again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, Bill. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, you know, if you're designing in public space and graffiti is a concern, you know, and that type of vandalism, um, you know, if somebody wants a graffiti a flex MSE system, uh, we'll just hedge clip it off and and call it a day. So that's where the similarities end. Uh, so I wanna talk a bit about uh, how Flex MSE is unique to all other systems in the market. So it uh, can be installed anywhere from horizontal, so for channel claddings or outfalls, that sort of thing, all the way up to pure vertical as a living wall, so where you're attaching to an existing structure. Uh, we typically see one to one, so 45 degrees, to one to 10, 85 degrees. The nice thing about Flex MSC is that regardless of your batter, it's the same two components. So you're never getting that panic call from a job site saying, oh, the grading's changed, now we need a plate B with a bag C. It's always the same two components, so it's very versatile, uh, easy to field fit uh, if that's necessary. Uh, the system's able to withstand almost unlimited differential settlement. So over a 30-foot stretch, the system could settle up to six feet without failing. So if you have six feet of site settlement, You've got other issues, uh, but a failed wall isn't going to be one of them. And we were able to determine this through flak analysis, so earthquake analysis. Uh, we were being considered for a diking upgrade where uh, they modeled 30-foot uh, sections of flex MSC, of concrete block, of basket, of earth and berm, a few other things. And then they ran earthquake simulations from a 4.0 all the way up to a 9.0 with liquefaction. And the only system that survived that full test was Flex MSE, and the maximum settlement was six feet. So this is really great if you're in a seismic uh, area. Uh, where this is also really great is if you're designing uh, with poor in-situ materials, so in a bog or a marsh or a soft site, where you're uh, bound to experience some differential settlement. So say you installed it, you'd seen a little bit of settlement, you're satisfied that it had stabilized, it's very easy to add bags to the top of the wall, revegetate it and move on. With a hard armor system, you're taking the system down, you're resetting it, you're getting it back to plumb and square. Uh, Flex MSC is a lot more forgiving. Uh, the system carries a uh, ASTM design life of 120 years. So this is a permanent application. Uh, the one caveat here is that it's vegetated within a thousand hours of peak UV. So what does that mean? Uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, that might be a year of exposure. Um, in the Midwest and in, uh, where we are in, in uh, Canada, um, 
it could be five to seven years before you hit that thousand hours. Uh, the, the specification for the system calls for it to be vegetated within six months. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, we're not selling black bag walls here. We want vegetated walls. So we want folks thinking about that vegetation right up front and getting it established uh, to stabilize the face. Uh, the system also carries a 75 year manufacturer's warranty. So this is pretty unheard of in the wall facing business. You know, most folks are designing to a 75 year design life. Uh, we'll actually warranty that entire period and it's underwritten by the largest insurance company in the world. Uh, the system qualifies for up to 21 lead credits in four categories. So even if you're not going for lead certification, more and more projects are following lead uh, guidelines for, for construction. Uh, so you can imagine, uh, you know, the difference between gold and platinum lead is around 20 credits. So when presented with a system like Flex MSE, um, it's, it's easy to get excited about the additional 21 credits that are available. Uh, and these are things that you don't really have to squint at, you know, recycled content, low water landscaping, uh, really easy to achieve uh, credits. Uh, the system uses 97% less greenhouse gas than concrete and 98.5% less than steel. So if your project is a green project or you're trying to reduce that carbon footprint or greenhouse, ga greenhouse gas output, uh, Flex MSC should definitely be part of that conversation. Uh, we use 50% recycled content in our manufacture and we're 100% recyclable. Uh, we're starting to see Flex MSE used for more temporary works even, uh, temporary weirs, dams, uh, even preload on sites. So if you're preloading a site for a building or a bridge, uh, instead of concrete, you can use Flex MSE, uh, vegetate it, and then at the end of the load cycle, 24 months, 36 months, uh, it's easy to empty the bags of the material, reuse that elsewhere on site, and then you can recycle the bag and plate 100%. Uh, installs in two thirds of time of a typical uh, 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 system, wall system. Uh, so we know time is money and uh, we come in at, at roughly 60% the cost. So usually when you're talking about something this versatile and this green, you expect to pay a bit of a premium. Uh, we actually go the other way where we're nearly half the cost. So. Let's talk a little bit about the applications for Flex MSE, where, uh, where we're used. Uh, for things like infrastructure, uh, this example here, this is a uh, road widening project, where as you can see, uh, as they're constructing the, the wall, there's no traffic control or flagging needed here. Um, as they're uh, constructing, they're still setting in the services behind the face. So you can see the conduit here for the lamp standards. And at the beginning of this project, there was an environmental monitor who took clippings of the native grasses and flowers, and they were able to uh, simply hydro seed that back on. Uh, sorry, I'll just go back one side here. Oh. Uh, they were able to hydro seed that back onto the face at the end of the build, and uh, they were able to uh, get back to nature. So naturalize that site. Um, so it's very easy to get back to what was there before. Uh, in this next example, uh, this is a 30 foot tall four lane roadway uh, built on the system. Uh, this was a very challenging site. Uh, there's a fish bearing stream here. There's old growth forest within five feet of either side of this berm. Um, it's so tight, in fact, uh, this fellow that's hydro seating is hanging from a crane uh, because it couldn't get equipment down that would, could lift him up high enough. Uh, this was originally designed to be a large concrete block face. So in order to go up 30 feet, they would have had to go down six feet to lock in the toe. Uh, with Flex MSE, the maximum embedment we see is 12 inches. So we trench down 12 inches, uh, 12 inches deep, 12 inches wide. Six inches of clear crush go in for, for drainage at the toe. And then your first row of Flex MSE and your back at grade. So very limited site disturbance. Uh, we're not taking a lot of uh, material away. We're not bringing a lot of forward material in. And then the finished result is amazing. Uh, we've got this wildflower mix uh, with these native grasses and uh, it completely hides the entire infrastructure. Uh, so uh, that's a little bit on roadways. Uh, another area that we do a ton of work in is anywhere land meets water. So 
for waterways and fisheries folks, uh, we accomplished three major things uh, for them. One is uh, we don't create a heat island, so we're not heating the water up. Uh, there's a lot of studies out there that show if you increase water temperature by a single degree, the fish may not come back to spawn. Uh, the second thing is, is we don't leach anything ever. So the material that's in the bags won't leach out, but we also prevent silt and sediment from transitioning from the backfill zone through the face into the water. And the number one pollutant for waterways today are silt and sediment. So essentially those get into the waterways, settle down to the bottom, uh, create an ecoxic uh, environment. So basically remove all the oxygen, uh, kills off the, the plants, kills off the aquatic life, uh, and effectively kills a waterway. Um, and then the third thing is we're able to restore the riparian zone very quickly. So in this example, there was a failing timber crib wall here, uh, replaced with Flex MSE, uh, freshly hydro seeded here. And then you can see this is after a single growing season. Um, and then the last photo here shows the typical storm event. Uh, they get about one of these a month. Um, where flows can exceed that 15 to 20 uh, square feet per second and tons of volume. So the system's able to withstand all of that and, uh, and do very well. Uh, you'll note here that there's a, a bit of river cobble along the toe uh, to prevent uh, scour. Uh, this project is now roughly eight years old. Uh, since this time, we've actually modified how we uh, protect for scour. Instead of using uh, riprap or stone, uh, we've started to use geogrid to protect these lower courses. So what will happen is a layer of grid goes uh, down, a couple lifts of flex MSE, and then the grid is folded back into the backfill zone, uh, completely capturing these rows. Uh, the vegetation will still grow through the apertures in the grid, so it all disappears. But if the scour wants to try to remove these lower courses, it actually has to take the entire uh, structure with it. So uh, in this example, this little creek here, this is pretty typical flows, but if the average high water mark were, were higher, uh, what we would do is we would wrap to, skip to, wrap to until we reach that uh, high water mark, uh, just further reinforcing the entire uh, structure. So it works, works well. You know, I've seen a uh, car sized riprap get moved downstream. Uh, if the water wants it to go, it's gone. So uh, this is a great way to, uh, uh, to kind of protect against that. Uh, this next example here is a little creek side again. Uh, this ravine, uh, they'd have mudslides that would come down in and choke out this little creek. Um, they reinforced the banks using the system uh, and then uh, built a little head wall here with a walking path above it and kind of finished it off nicely. Uh, the bottom photo shows uh, the system two years post vegetation. So this was uh, live planted with fern plugs, and then two years later, the systems uh, completely disappeared. So I always say, you know, the good thing about Flex MSE is in a short period of time, it disappears. The bad thing is in a short period of time, it disappears. So if you want to show off your work, make sure you're getting uh, lots of good photos and, and uh, uh, so you can show your, uh, your clients. Uh, this next example here, this is a uh, lakefront uh, project. You can see these folks had uh, uh, heavy wave and wake erosion at the shoreline. They were able to reclaim their original property line and level this lot. Um, the bottom left photo here shows uh, the day they completed installation. So already taking some high energy waves and heavy wave action. Flex MSE is 100% of its strength the day you put it in. It doesn't require the root pack to get strong. It just gets stronger over time. So you can see in the final photo here that they've planted some woody varieties. Uh, they've taken over, they've got the walkway to their dock uh, on top of the wall and it's performing very well. So uh, for lakefront, oceanfront, riverfront, uh, we have lots of uh, precedents there. Uh, this final water example I wanna show you guys is uh, some stormwater management. So when these folks were putting in this uh, subdivision here, the municipality showed up and said, hey, with all this non-porous uh, surface you're, you're adding, so roads and sidewalks, et cetera, that <clears throat> uh, our existing stormwater system can't keep up with that. So you're gonna have to put in supplemental uh, stormwater management. Um, so rather than put a mechanical tank in place or uh, embed uh, 
chambers uh, below uh, below the surface. What they did is they created this basin here, and once they had kind of uh, created the basin, rather than continue to grade out and use up this valuable real estate, uh, they used the system to terrace up so they could get their volume. Um, and then they vegetated the entire uh, area. Uh, they added a walking path around the, the pond here. Uh, so uh, under, you know, 99% of the time, this is what it looks like under a storm event. Uh, this will fill up and then just perk down into the aquifer from there. So they created this great community future, feature and uh, we think it looks uh, amazing. Uh, the next area that we want to talk a little bit about are slopes and walls. So of course this is a big area for us. Um, you know this first example here is a shot of our uh, tallest uh, slope to date. Uh, so this is nearly 70 feet tall. Um, you can see the, the fellow is kind of in the center of the shot on the right. It's also in the center of the shot on the left. Um, busy highway up top, water down below. Uh, everything was staged off-site and then barged into the toe of the wall. And we were up six feet in six feet until they reached the top of wall. Uh, to drive a single pile here would, uh, was over a million dollars. And we were able to complete this entire project for under a million dollars. So great savings to the client and uh, stabilize the slope. Uh, I don't know if, it, if you guys are experiencing the, the same way we are here in Canada, but you know, all that good flat building uh, uh, space has, has been used up. So now folks are trying to build into the side of hills and mountains. Uh, in this example here, these folks are trying to take advantage of this beautiful view here. So they want to extend their lot as far as they can out on the slope. Um, uh, you, and so they use Flex MSE, so the finished uh, finish aesthetic will be amazing and it'll get them the uh, square footage they, they're looking for. Uh, one of the things, uh, uh, the great things about Flex MSE is that the system is free draining. Uh, so it doesn't require supplemental drainage behind the face. So no chimney drains, uh, no additional drainage needs to go in behind the face of the wall. Um, which, which lends the system to uh, being less particular about what goes behind the, the wall for backfill material. So in this case, uh, this material that they used was the waste material from all the blasting they did on site. Um, the engineer was satisfied that he was getting the strike through that he needed on the grid. Uh, so he approved this material. So rather than have to haul all that material away and bring in foreign materials to the site, they were able to reuse it and uh, as a backfill material. So uh, great savings and environmentally, uh, it's uh, awesome. So um, this next example here, this is a, uh, a commercial uh, site. Uh, you know, prior to the system being installed, they'd have to shut down this path uh, twice a year uh, due to flooding. Uh, since they've installed it, they haven't had to shut it down. Uh, not only is it using all that water to feed the root systems, but it's actually slowing down the flows enough so the existing drainage can keep up with it. So it's great kind of stormwater management built into the, the system. Uh, this is uh, 26,000 square feet at the face. Uh, eight guys built this in 12 days. So incredibly fast production. Um, each crew, each four person crew was completing between 1,000 and 1,200 uh, square feet each day. So uh, pretty incredible and um, yeah, it's uh, and now it's supporting a shopping mall with a parking lot and there's gas stations and all kinds of restaurants above it. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, this next example is a, a shot of our tallest pure MSE wall to date at uh, nearly 40 feet tall. Pretty tough to get a single shot of this uh, uh, wall. Uh, so we've got a few uh, kind of stills from some drone footage. Um, this is a uh, building site for a three-story, uh, 147 resident uh, memory care home in Kirkland, Washington. Uh, pretty incredible site. Um, they start with a Vashon till uh, in situ material, so glacial till. Um, they had a lot of challenges here. The engineer could not make a block or basket work for the space, uh, primarily because there's an enormous stormwater uh, containment chamber buried in the backfill zone. So he was trying to get grid runs that were in that 20 to 25 foot 
uh, range, uh, but could only really get to around 15 feet and ran into problems. So with Flex MSE, um, when we design with Flex MSE, anything up to two feet, uh, gravity stack is typically fine. Anything that's going to be up to four feet without loading, um, we use what we call a tieback method. So where every second row, every second bag is turned perpendicular to the face. So you get the length of the bag tying back into the backfill zone, uh, much like a dead man on a crib wall. Anything that's going to be above four feet or anything that's going to be uh, have loading, uh, we would follow the same conventions as you would with any other MSE design. So typically 60 to 80% of the overall height embedded every two feet of lift. So same conventions as you would with, uh, with block or basket. The nice thing about Flex MSE though is that because it's modular, the engineer in this case was able to change his grid intervals to every second row or every third row and increase the number of runs going back into the backfill zone without having to increase the length. And he was able to make the math work. So this, uh, this is a pretty incredible site. Uh, the building is now complete. It's within uh, five feet of the front edge of this wall. It's a poured pad building and it's uh, three stories up. Uh, it's pretty incredible. So, uh, you know, we, we showed the, uh, the ability of Flex MSC around live loading with our uh, uh, 30 foot tall uh, roadway. And th this is a great example of that static loading. Uh, during construction of this uh, uh, wall, uh, they saw two major events. Uh, they had a 3.4 magnitude earthquake and they set uh, three rainfall records. So uh, the face was surveyed throughout the build uh, to check for movement or any anomalies and there was zero movement uh, recorded throughout the build. So it bodes well for the system. Uh, so the next area we want to talk a little bit about is uh, uh, landscaping, of course, we do a ton of work in, in landscaping and aesthetics. Um, you know, the nice thing about the system is that you can snap a line, uh, build a straight wall with right angle corners uh, if you like, but you can also create an organic line or follow one that's there, go over things like rocks, stumps, that sort of thing, uh, without impacting the integrity of the system. So in this case, uh, there was formerly a, a concrete wall here, um, lots of graffiti, people breaking bottles against it. They'd hop over and party in this guy's yard. Uh, so when it came time to replace the, uh, the face here, uh, they had a number of stakeholders. So they had fisheries and oceans, they had two First Nations groups, they had a uh, parks division, a regional district, as well as a, a very vocal community group as to uh, what was coming in here. Um, so the Flex MSC was the only system that really checked everyone's boxes and um, the finished result uh, looks like it's been there uh, since the beginning of time. And it's pretty amazing. Uh, this next example here, they told us we couldn't put green walls in the desert. Well, this is in a desert uh, at a winery. Um, above this wall, they, they have a vineyard above here. They used to continue down to a road below and they made this uh, 20 foot cut here so they could put in a uh, new parking lot. Uh, there's a high plastic clay backfill material it's south facing, you know, all those great things you want in a desert application. Um, I have a ton of photos of this fully grown in looking amazing. Uh, but I like this photo because you can kind of still see that drip line irrigation poking through the face. So I always say, build like concrete, finish like landscaping. So if your region requires it, or your uh, vegetation selection requires it, or the orientation of the wall requires it, uh, then irrigate your wall. And this is kind of where we part ways with traditional wall systems in the sense that if you're designing with any of these other systems, you're trying to get water as far away from the face as you can. Uh, with Flex MSC, we actually invite it. We want it feeding that root system. And, uh, and the nice thing is, is that uh, the material that's contained in the bags uh, will actually hold moisture. So the, uh, the um, irrigation cycles are very low. And um, we, we recommend uh, using rain sensors or moisture sensors uh, in the system as well so that you're not overwatering uh, because it, uh, it will hold a lot of that water. Uh, this next example here, this is a homeowner built project. So 
uh, this guy is a long haul aircraft uh, pilot. Um, you know, he, he does these long haul flights to uh, Asia, that sort of thing. So he'll fly for a week and he gets three weeks off. Uh, he's got this beautiful house with a beautiful view and about a four foot backyard. Uh, his property line was down here, uh, down the bottom of this ravine. Um, so essentially what he did is himself, uh, over the course of a year, he terraced this up um, and added uh, 30 feet to his backyard, uh, live planted with, uh, with succulents, and uh, we think it's one of the best jobs uh, we've seen. This is definitely the guy I want flying my plane. Um, you know, his attention to detail was amazing. <laughs> Every bag looked like copy paste, copy paste, perfect. So. Uh, and then finishing landscaping, this is a high-end residential. Uh, so these folks had a very steep lot uh, with a little tiny house at the top. Uh, they raised that and pulled their building footprint out about three quarters of the lot. Uh, they parked their cars at the top. Uh, they've got some pretty massive cedars to hold up. Um, this was originally specified for a segmental concrete block wall. Uh, they went with Flex MSC instead and aesthetically uh, we think it's amazing. So, uh, you know, these guys have a full-time gardener, so they're not worried about that periwinkle down below. They got somebody managing that. Uh, but, you know, the system is performing a very serious uh, site support function, um, as well as aesthetically uh, off the charts. Uh, want to talk a little bit about uh, lead and green building. Um, so uh, these credits are available uh, on our site if you want to check them out. Uh, but like I said, this is um, pretty, easy stuff, recycled content, innovation in design, uh, stormwater management, that sort of thing. Uh, this is the first gold lead certified building in Canada. Uh, so this is EA Games, the uh, video game guys. Uh, this is their headquarters. So uh, this, uh, this wall here, this is uh, 600 feet long and the batter on this changes six times over the course of the wall. So even though the toe is snapped to a line, uh, they've got a soccer pitch and a tennis court and a basketball court and a park above it. So the top of wall is able to accommodate those changes uh, without uh, impacting the integrity. Uh, this is live staked with willows. So the process here is that you have somebody with a little piece of rebar and a mallet uh, walking along, creating a void between the bags uh, with that mallet. And then somebody following them, uh, filling those voids with the willow cuttings. Uh, you splash a little water on it, and uh, 45 days later, this is what you've got. So willows uh, having that rhizominous root pattern, much like grasses, uh, that's an approved uh, uh, method of vegetation. So willow, alder, dogwood, uh, all acceptable forms of vegetation. Uh, this is in 2006. Uh, these willows are now 20 feet tall, um, and it's amazing. Uh, I, I take folks to, to view this site and really there's nothing to see. It's a willow forest, you know, <laughs> so uh, it's a good idea to have these before photos um, so that they, you can compare to the after for sure. Uh, we do a lot of work uh, for community and public spaces. Um, you know, this example here, these folks had a really flat area. They wanted to put this playground in. So they used the system to create these uh, elevations. Uh, rolled some core matting over it, uh, hydro seeded it, and so the kids now have a nice soft landing spot. But they incorporated the slides and the steps right into the face um, and created a very interesting uh, space. Um, this is a uh, uh, nearly a mile long, six foot tall uh, sound barrier. Um, so uh, this was formerly farmland, and they decided to punch in the ring road around the city uh, through this area. Uh, well, the folks in this subdivision weren't too happy about that. They didn't want all that additional uh, traffic noise. Um, so essentially, they put in this sound barrier to run along the length of the uh, subdivision. Uh, FlexMSC has been ISO uh, tested uh, for, for sound, and um, it's pretty incredible. It's about as good as it gets. Um, how, for those folks that don't know, how they kind of judge the sound uh, uh, barrier stuff is you're trying to get to a one. So a, a one is anechoic, so no reflection. Um, typically, the, the concrete uh, fences that you see along uh, major uh, freeways and interstates, uh, those are uh, typically a 0.6. 
So what that means is that 40% of the sound is being reflected back. So it's, uh, the sooner you can get, uh, the closer you can get to one, the better. Uh, with Flex MSE, a, a single layer of Flex MSE, uh, non-vegetated, uh, is a 0.8. So pretty darn good. A uh, single layer of Flex MSE with vegetation is a 1. So as good as it gets. So you can imagine a layer of Flex MSE, some compacted earth, and then another layer of Flex MSE, uh, vegetated. Uh, these folks aren't hearing anything from the other side. So pretty incredible for these applications. It gives you a really nice aesthetic with that 120 year design life. Uh, other applications, uh, this is an award-winning park feature where uh, this is a five story uh, elevation essentially built on the system. Uh, this little slope here, uh, this is uh, dual purpose. So in the summertime, they have an inflatable movie screen that they pop up here and families come and sit along this slope and watch movies. And in the wintertime, this is a toboggan hill. So uh, they actually had to shut her down the first year. It was a little too quick. We had to remove a couple more trees from the end. Uh, but it's a, a great public uh, feature. Um, you know, when, they're, when you're standing up around this fire pit here, you have great 360 degree views of the city. It's uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, another area we do a bit of work in is uh, trails. So whether it's a, you're doing a cut fill, uh, punching in a new trail, or you're doing a trail repair or widening, um, in this example here, these guys had a shallow slope failure, which took out part of the trail. We were able to reestablish their trail, uh, reincorporate their fence uh, system, and then revegetate it with the existing uh, ferns and, and such. Um, and it looks great. It matches everything that's before and after it and very stable. Uh, so uh, FlexMSE is really easy to uh, transport to site. You can use one of these walk uh, behinds or you can fill right on site and it makes it uh, very, uh, very easy to uh, accomplish this uh, work. Uh, and then the final example for this uh, section, uh, these folks here, they, uh, this resort, um, they, uh, they wanted to incorporate some of the rocks and stumps that they uh, had on site, as well as they had a very deliberate planting plan in mind. Um, this wall here is actually supporting their tennis court. So tennis players hate the cracked asphalt, you know, they, so it needed to be very stable, uh, engineered. And we think it looks amazing. It looks like they carved it out of the side of the mountain. Uh, this site is actually, um, was completely flat when we showed up. Uh, so even these elevations here where you see the townhomes on top of them, uh, this is all the system as well. So we created a, around five different elevation changes on site and really made it uh, look natural. Uh, we think they did a great job with their, uh, with their design on this. Uh, another area we'll just touch briefly on is the golf course uh, infrastructure and aesthetics. Uh, I like this uh, example here. Uh, these folks had some shoreline erosion. Um, and the nice thing about, uh, they were at risk of losing their uh, uh, cart path here. The nice thing about the system is that if you were to come in here and repair the shoreline with the hard armor system, uh, you'd create right angles and, and flat surfaces. And the potential is, is that you, you're changing the direction of the water, you're potentially speeding it up and causing further issues downstream. Uh, they were able to come in and actually mimic the uh, previous shoreline uh, using the system. So they didn't change the profile at all and uh, were able to, um, we're able to reestablish the, the existing vegetation, uh, the natural vegetation, and stabilize the slope. Uh, so we really like this. Um, other golf course things, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of the sod bunkers going away, in particular in the United Kingdom, where they're replacing them with the, with the system, uh, rolling sod over the face, pinning it right into the, the system there. They're able to drive their uh, machinery right along the top of the wall now and the maintenance is, uh, falls to zero on this stuff um, versus a sod bunker, which you're repairing each, each year. And then the uh, final example here, this is a transition uh, from the parking lot into the golf course. Uh, this needed to be engineered because there's a lot of machinery and golf carts that, that travel on this little path. Uh, but rather than a, a concrete face here, uh, they use a system and they mimic the planting that you see once you get on, on the property. 
So it's a beautiful transition uh, into the naturalized area of the golf course, uh, and we think it looks great. So, uh, so that gives you a quick exa uh, example of some of the applications of the system. I want to uh, get a little bit into the filling and construction and vegetation options now. Uh, just a note, we have roughly 7,500 projects worldwide. Um, certainly, um, you know, I get a lot of napkin sketches after these meetings where somebody says, oh, I got a weird one from you, and they send something off. And we could typically send you some, an example back of where we've uh, uh, dealt with that before and some of the precedents around it. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out uh, with your ideas. You're doing great uh, on so time there, filling, Mike. You got about 15 okay. minutes left. You're doing awesome on time, about 15 minutes. Thank you. Great. Yeah. I, I just want to uh, touch a little bit on the filling and construction and, uh, and yeah, we should, we should land right on time. That'll help uh, some of the Q and A's. We've had some people ask about what are the bags made of? What are the plates made of? What's the fill sure. material and the batter? So I'll let you cover that. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. So let's um, uh, talk a little bit about filling and construction. Maybe this will answer some of the questions. Um, you can fill these with a pile of dirt and a shovel. Um, we also have plans for these uh, filling jigs on our website, which will allow you to fill uh, 18 units at a time using a yard bucket. Uh, so a three-man crew can fill around 600 units a day uh, using this method. Uh, if you need 1,200 units a day, you build two more jigs, you add two more people, it's very scalable. Uh, there's also uh, a ton of automated uh, machinery out there. Uh, this is a hopper-fed um, automated machine, fills it, sews it, spits it out the back. This one will fill around 3,000 a day. Um, we also, in, in several of our regions, we have uh, fill lots uh, where we can deliver these actually pre-filled to your site, ready to go in the ground. Uh, the material that goes in the bags is a 66% sand, 34% compost, with less than 8% fines overall. So good, clean sand, a nice compost uh, mixed by volume. And that can typically be done right on site if you, if you have uh, the materials delivered. Uh, for construction, we are the only vegetated system in the world that certifies its installers. The certification is free and it's online. Uh, we would encourage you and your teams to, uh, to take the certification. Um, it's a pretty straightforward course, but it's serious. You need 70% uh, to pass. Um, it's a time test at the end, that sort of thing. Taking the certification is going to accomplish a couple big things for you guys. It's, uh, you're going to be able to bid these projects in reality. So it's tough when you see a new system and you're not sure what goes into it and you know, how much time am I going to need, how much materials. It's very easy to overbid these things. Uh, the certification kind of shines a light on how simple it is. Uh, and then the second thing is, is that you're going to have beautifully built walls. So I've seen a lot of professional wall builders really overthink Flex MSE and waste a lot of time trying to do all the things they normally would with other systems. So we would encourage everyone to take that. It's very easy. There's, uh, uh, you can just send us uh, a e quick email and we'll sign you up for that. Uh, for construction, uh, most of our applications start at grade. So your first row of plates goes down, first row of bags center over those plates. Then you bridge the joint between each bag with another plate, offset by half a bag, center over the plate, rinse and repeat. Like I said, you know, if, if you've ever built a wall before, you're overqualified for the system, uh, but we would encourage you to take that uh, uh, certification. It really, it really helps. Uh, for vegetation, uh, most of our, uh, the most common uh, application would be hydro seed still. Uh, we recommend a flexible growth medium or a bonded fiber matrix, uh, something that's going to uh, uh, give you uh, good adhesion to the face, and, uh, and be able to um, uh, give the plants uh, a, an opportunity to germinate. Uh, the challenge with hydro seed is that if your hydro seeder shows up and they're using their straw or their paper mulch, uh, the risk is, is that uh, the overnight dew will just peel it off the face. So those mulches are great for horizontal surfaces where you're not uh, seeing that potential. But something like a, a flexible growth medium, uh, like FlexTerra is one of the brands, that sort of thing, they work very well in the system. We also allow up to three inverted T cuts in the face of each bag or up to 20 dibber punctures. So we'll allow 20% of the face to be cut uh, for vegetation purposes. So you can be more deliberate with your plantings um, and, uh, and have a uh, much uh, nicer finished aesthetic. 
Uh, if you're installing your water or you don't want to cut into the bags for whatever reason, you can also use brush layering where you're setting your root wad in behind the face of the wall and then running your plant out between the bags. Uh, this is great. You're fully constructed and vegetated at the same time. Uh, you have a good mature vegetation uh, right off the bat and, um, and you don't have to come back uh, later and hit it with a hydro seed. Uh, this bottom uh, photo here, uh, this is taken, um, uh, this, this bag was cut off the top of a wall after 30 days. You can see some grass growth and some clover growth here. Uh, but the important thing is, is that the roots had already gone through the bag, into the backfill zone, and into the bags around it. And so it's that deep root web penetration that's going to give you good cyclical growth. So once the vegetation is established, um, it takes on a life of its own. You're not coming back every couple of years and revegetating it and that sort of thing. Once it's established, you're good to go. All of the maintenance to do with the system is around the vegetation, other than a periodic inspection for settlement. Um, it's all to do with the uh, vegetation. So if your client has a low tolerance for maintenance, you can be like these folks here where they have, uh, this is a golf course uh, with a cart path above this. This wall needed to be engineered, but they didn't want to look at block or rock. Um, they also didn't want to have to mow this. Uh, so they just chose dwarf fescues, which only grow a few inches and have a good broad blade. Um, so this is their finished aesthetic and uh, yeah, we think it looks great. Uh, guaranteed there's a thousand golf balls in the side of it. So, uh, you know, it's golf ball resistant if anybody's worried about that. Um, if maintenance isn't an issue, uh, it could be like these folks. This is uh, Bill's uh, summer home here in Vancouver. Uh, there's, I around wasn't gonna... <laughs> there's around $50,000 worth of roses in here. Uh, you know, this is a beautifully manicured and managed uh, garden. Um, this project here is, is actually very interesting because there's a road that kind of goes up on an angle in behind here. There's a mountain stream that comes down the right hand or the left hand side here. And um, on the original master plan, this was just an odd pie wedged piece of property uh, that was intended for a sign and a fountain and they were going to put some landscaping in here. Because we were able to bench this out enough, it gave them enough of a building footprint that they actually put their show home on top of it. So gain the developer an additional piece of land that wasn't part of the original uh, master plan. Uh, this just recently sold. I think the listing might still be active, uh, but they made out okay on this guy. So you can imagine from a developer's perspective, that's a $10 million win. Um, and if you look at the rest of the development, you see they have a concrete block here. They have stamped concrete here. Uh, this is the only purely vegetated uh, build on the site, and I'm not biased or anything, but I think it's the best looking one. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, they're definitely a, a win-win for everyone. So. Um, and then you get to avoid situations like this where you have um, these two shots are taken after the same period of rain. Uh, you can see that efflorescence, that calcification happening. Um, Flex MSC just took all that moisture and exploded in vegetation. So you might need to mow this lawn, but I'll take this maintenance over this maintenance any day. Uh, these folks here are out pressure washing this every couple months, keeping it looking good. Uh, so, uh, And then there are a few uh, vegetated uh, gabion or wire mesh systems in the market. Kind of the industry joke on these is that they last as long as the vegetation warranty. So uh, you know, it seems like you flip your calendar over after a couple of years and you get this die off. Um, and the reason for that is these are still primarily a rock based system uh, with a little sleeve of soil at the face that's meant to promote the vegetation. So um, if you've ever looked at your garden beds or your flower beds after the winter or the rainy season, um, they shrink, shrink, shrink. And what's likely happened here is that all of that soil is consolidated down the bottom of this channel and there's no way to recharge it. They just kind of have to wait for this moss to take over or whatever's above it to lodge over and cover the face. And uh, I'm not sure that's the aesthetic they were after, but um, yeah, that's what they're stuck with. So, um, so that kind of brings us to the end of the uh, formal presentation. Uh, Bill, 
I'm, I'm happy to do some Q&A or I can also show uh, folks a little bit about uh, the website and some of the tools that are available there. I'll let I you think know. you can continue with the website because we're going to do two things okay. with the Q&A. We're going to touch sure. on a couple of them right here at the end, but we're going to, I want everybody on this call to hear, we have 82 participants. Thank you for joining us. We're going to reply to these Q&As in writing over the next couple of days. So when we send out the PDH certificates, we're going to also send back the Q&As with our written answers. And we're going to give them access to the recording of this presentation in case there's some things they want to go back and replay or they want to show it to their friends and coworkers. So why don't you go ahead and show them some of your tools on your awesome website? Sure. Thank you, Bill. Uh, so uh, if you visit uh, flexmsc.com, um, you'll, this is, this is our homepage here and we've got a bunch of really uh, great tools here. Um, you know, uh, uh, quick hits on um, landscaping, using the system for erosion control, walls and slopes, as well as some basic resources, specifications, vegetation, uh, small CAD library, that sort of thing. Uh, as well as where to contact your local ASP or quick draw um, uh, or, um, folks and, uh, and be able to find your local uh, dealer. Um, the, uh, as you kind of move down here, we've got some uh, um, uh, examples here for the, the type of uh, customer. So if you're an engineer looking for um, uh, information on how uh, Flex MSC is for, for engineering and that sort of uh, thing, um, the, uh, this, this will give you kind of an insight um, into you know, how the system kind of works from an engineering uh, uh, perspective. Uh, just going back to the home page for a second. Um, one of the areas that I, I wanted to focus on is about halfway down here, you'll see uh, our uh, a link to our Instagram page. Now, I promise you guys, it's not food I'm eating or it's, it's not me in a thong. Um, I promise you that. Uh, it's actually beautiful walls. And um, what you'll see here is every couple of days, uh, we'll upload something, a uh, project from somewhere around the world uh, highlighting uh, a use of the system. So whether it's this um, uh, parking lot uh, bordering on a uh, uh, sensitive environmental zone or this uh, shoreline work in New Zealand, um, this uh, great project in Wales where they actually uh, put built the foundation out of the system and then added some slate benches, vegetated this so the folks can sit beside the uh, river. Uh, we have hundreds of photos here. This is a Pittsburgh Zoo uh, project. So uh, hundreds of photos, early um, vegetation on that monster uh, wall in, in Kirkland. Uh, I would encourage you guys to kind of poke through this. Uh, you'll see stuff in here that that's going to maybe uh, trigger something. You know, uh, you might see something in here and go, hey, Mike, I'm trying to solve this problem. Tell me more about this uh, wall. And, uh, and we can uh, certainly uh, give you uh, a lot more detail, a lot more photos, that sort of thing. I was just trying to find this. This is that uh, three-story building in Kirkland uh, built on top of the wall, just so you can kind of see the, uh, uh, the finished uh, product there. Uh, just going back to um, uh, this area here, um, if you guys are interested at all in, in uh, getting some more uh, detailed technical information and access to our secure library, uh, please by all means send us an email and we'll set you up with access. Uh, once you log in, there's a number of really great tools here. I'll go through these quickly. Uh, things like um, all of our grid connection tests, the sound barrier test results, permeability, uh, shear, uh, as well as some spec engineer language that you can copy and paste into your designs uh, that gives you all the caveats. You just add your plan numbers, that sort of thing. Um, a full CAD library here in uh, DWG as well as PDF. Um, so we have roughly 35 different uh, CADs in here, um, kind of detailing everything you can imagine. If you're trying to figure out, for instance, say, how do I put a fence post in uh, uh, the system? There's a CAD here that you can attach to your, uh, your design, send off to a client, kind of lays it out there. So that's all here uh, in the CAD library. Technical information is going to be things like the uh, bag filling jigs and uh, plans and that sort of thing installation guidelines, some seed spec examples, training videos, as well as a maintenance brief that you can leave with your client at the end of the, uh, the project. 
something that just says, here's what you can and can't do about it. Uh, other documents contains things like our warranty or longevity statement, that sort of thing. Uh, photos and project profiles, pretty straightforward. Some great photo sets in here and some mini case studies as well. Um, the last thing I kind of want to show you before I, I, I uh, hand it back over to Bill are the, uh, uh, is our estimation tool. So this is something, you know, you, you, you're all learning about FlexMSC today, but now you love it. It's going to be on every one of your projects. So now you have to take it forward to your clients. And so with uh, FlexMSC, uh, essentially, if you log into the estimation tool, and you punch in, uh, we're gonna do a wall here that's six feet tall and it's 500 feet long. Uh, so with this basic information, uh, we're already halfway there on, a, on uh, estimating time and materials. Um, the first section uh, here, uh, you're gonna choose the style of wall you're building. Uh, as we talked about earlier, if you're over four feet, you're gonna use GeoGrid. So we select GeoGrid. The next question is, do you require a top cap? Top cap is where the very top row of bags, each bag is turned perpendicular to the face. So you get, you can tie in with an existing grade above the wall if you want. Uh, for this example, we're just gonna leave it as is. So with this basic information, height, length, style of wall, we know now that we're gonna need 3,600 uh, flex MSE units and 1,148 uh, square yards of grid. Uh, so now the next question is, are you going to fill these yourself or are you going to buy them pre-filled? So for this exercise, we'll say we're going to fill them on site. So now we know that we're, you're going to need 150 cubic yards of the bag fill material. It's going to take 180 man hours uh, to fill these using our jigs. And it's going to take 180 man hours to install them. So you can print this now. You can save it as a PDF. You can put it into the file. Uh, the reason these, are two, these two are separated here is that this crew uh, bag filling, this is your entry level, you know, putting dirt in bags, guys. Uh, the installation crew, these are machine operators, certified installers. This is a different uh, type of crew uh, altogether. And Mike, and so, for the yes, sake sir. of time, for the sake of time, if you get to my last two slides after you wrap this up, I'll close out with those last two. Yes, sir. I, I'm, I'm uh, wrapping up right now, Bill. So. Um, yeah, so this is a, uh, a very uh, important tool and something that, uh, like I say, you have access to once you log in and um, it's gonna make uh, designing and, and estimating with uh, Flex MSC uh, very easy. Uh, and so I love it. I love it because you, you're, you're also good at um, the in-person meetings, which we can't do right now. But one of the things I wanted to do, and I know you said so, so I'm gonna hand it back to you, but I wanted everybody to consider this just an introduction and we love doing these and we can do these with individuals or with their coworkers or with their clients. Uh, Mike and I are available. Uh, Mike has other people on his team who are brilliant. And we, we'd, we'd love for you to reach back to us and do more of this. We can go more in depth. Great, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. You so have something else you're gonna add before I close this out. No, I just, uh, uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Um, basically that, uh, like, like I said earlier, um, if you guys want to, um, uh, gain access to that secure area. We just need a first and last name and your email address. Uh, you can send that to our team through the website and, and we'll open that up um, yeah, or reach out to your uh, our friends at Quick Supply or ASP or Bowman and, and they'll be able to, uh, to get you set up as well. So. I love it. That's perfect. Thank you, Mike. Everybody's clapping for you at home and folks that have done this with us before, you'll, you know to expect uh, more information from us that'll have a survey monkey. It'll have your name, your email address, and your city. We'll, we'll ask you a couple of questions. Um, what projects do you have that you want help with right now? And we can get more specific about cost. I saw people asking about that. And then also just feedback for this webinar and future webinars. We have more coming. If you'd advance to the next slide for me, Mike, that'd be one left. Then this shows that we have one scheduled in two weeks on June 10th, soft armor erosion control. And we have some of our guys that are gonna talk specifically about turf reinforcement mats and then a new um, high, high strength solution beyond turf reinforcement mats. We'll have that presenter here as well to be Tim Lancaster presenting on InstaTurf. And we already have a couple other commitments from some other manufacturers for some specific solutions. And we're gonna keep doing this every two weeks, so stay tuned for more information. Please return that survey monkey. That's how you'll get your PDH certificate. And with that, we'll also send everyone access to the recorded webinar. So thank you everybody for attending. Uh, look forward to hearing from you all. Mike, thank you again. Great job.
Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing uh, from everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Take care.